Dermot, News Center 7. And now, your Storm Center 7 forecast with meteorologist Robert Cotro III. All right, Robert, so we are four days shy of a record that really nobody, including some of my neighbors, they want you to make it rain, by the way. Uh, uh, thankfully, it has. Want to be a part of not much. We're I talking mean, about nearly two weeks without rain. That, that's two right. Weeks. The record for Dayton to not see any rain at all was 20 days, and we made it up to 16. So from May 21st to June 5th, we went 16 days without rain. That 20-day record, that was back in 1999, from March 11th to March 30th. And if you want to get real persnickety, there was actually a longer streak in the 1970s, 1977, which went, I think, 28 days. Although in the middle of that 28-day stretch, there was one day with a trace of rain. So that's less than a hundredth of an inch. But for climate purposes, 20 days is the longest stretch of dry weather in Dayton. And we didn't quite make it at 16 days ending today. Not that we saw that much rain actually at the airport today. I think the latest number right now is six one hundredths of an inch. A few places saw a little more. You can see where this lighter teal color is, kind of going across Miami County and into Greene County. That's where we saw the most rain. And it's not a lot. You can see 0.25 in Troy, 0.16 in Xenia. The funny thing is that's at the airport in Xenia. If you go near Ankeny Road in Xenia, we actually saw 0.27 inches, and at least that's the latest so far. These will kind of trickle in here, no pun intended, over the next couple hours. But Troy, just about a quarter of an inch. That was the second highest thus far. Also with Fairborn, it's tied. And you can see Huber Heights, just over 0.2 inches of rain. So any little bit helps. And we did see a little bit, thankfully. Hopefully that actually helped clear the sky as well because it's been so hazy. Also, the cold front, that's the reason that we're seeing a lot of this shower activity and some of this cloud cover pushing south. You can see the rain coming in overnight. Not everyone saw rain, but looks like a lot of us saw at least a little bit. The heaviest rain at the moment, just outside the viewing area, you can see just south of Washington Courthouse, some heavier showers that way. And you have a few little specks here of some light green, but for the most part, we're done with the rain. I'm still going to expect the chance of a few showers falling overnight like 2 or 3 a.m., but other than that, we're pretty good. In fact, you can see some clearing skies now, even as even within the Miami Valley, our northern counties, Mercer, Auglaize, even Logan County, starting to see some clearing skies. Because I know it was smoky today, but regardless, we were still looking at partly to mostly cloudy skies. But as that cold front pushes through, you can see it's just passing through Cincinnati now. It's moving fairly slowly, but it is pushing out of the way. And soon enough, we'll start to see this the cloud cover kind of disperse and whatever rain is left will move out of the way too. So temperatures right now, you're not seeing a big difference thanks to the cold front. You can still see 59 in Sydney. That's not that much cooler than Dayton. So the biggest difference you'll feel is likely in the afternoon tomorrow, the next few days, highs will only be in the upper 70s, which is seasonable for this time of year. In the mornings, temperatures in the low 50s might even squeak into the upper 40s, I'd say in our northern county. So you might feel a bit of a chill. Now, as that rain pushes out, again, we're going to be left with some clear skies for the most part Wednesday and really for the rest of the week. Now, until Sunday, you'll see Sunday, we actually have a chance of some isolated showers with a cold front moving through. And as we heat up into the weekend a bit, that cold front knocks us back down in the beginning of next week. New on WHIO TV tonight, Michigan State Police say a 10-year-old led them on a mile-long chase down the interstate. MSP said OnStar disabled the SUV after the driver refused to stop. Several 911 callers reported a child driving a car on the interstate here in Michigan. The child then ran off from the stolen car before Michigan State Troopers arrested him and booked him into a county juvenile detention center. He told troopers in Michigan he stole the car to try and go see his mom in Detroit. Well, some might say... If you